Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paige Bischler, and I am a graduate student in the Interior Architecture Department at UNCG. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the Flexi Rocker, an active seating option for those with ADHD. Firstly, let's take a look at some of the research I did prior to beginning my designs. For a bit of context, according to the Mayo Clinic in the Diagnostic Statistic Manual, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is a chronic condition that affects millions of children and often continues into adulthood. ADHD includes a combination of persistent problems such as difficulty sustaining attention, hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior. According to Attitude ADHD Magazine, students with ADHD often have trouble with attendance, maintaining their GPAs, and especially with homework. There are some accommodations, however, that are being offered to lessen ADHD symptoms in the classroom. These include offering more time on assignments, giving students breaks, alternate seating options that allow students to move, and smaller classroom sizes. For the purpose of my research, this pr presentation will be looking closer at active seating. Active seating has made a wide appearance in educational settings as they are often used for accommodating students who need more stimulation. Part of this is sensory integration theory. Sensory integration theory was developed in the 1970s by a psychologist named Jane Ares and is described that to function successfully in our environment, we must successfully integrate all of our senses. This includes our five senses, sight, taste, sound, smell, and touch, as well as two other non-traditional senses, the vestibular, which senses acceleration and three-dimensional movement, and proprioception, which senses the position of our body parts in space relative to the rest of our body. If we are not able to integrate all senses, it creates a disconnect that can cause people, especially those with ADHD, to not react as someone without ADHD may react in certain situations. Because of this, active seating works well to make all senses work together. Before starting the design process, I first looked at existing active seating options. The three images above are some options that are commonly found in learning environments. First is the cantilever chair, allowing users to bounce or rock, Second is the swivel chair, which allows its users to swivel and sway. And lastly is the Gaiam ball chair, allowing its users to bounce. From the existing options previously listed, I created a prototype called the box swing, which led me to the design of the flexi rocker. Before creating a new piece, I had to consider cleanability, safety for young adults or children, and durability as this was meant to be placed in a school environment. Some desires for the chair were active elements such as rocking, bouncing, tapping, or stimulating different textures. For my first prototype, I designed the box swing. This chair allows its users to rock back and forth. After creating a 3D model and then building the box swing, I realized that the squared arms and back were quite uncomfortable. Following the design of the prototype for a box swing chair, I developed the design further and created the flexi rocker. To move forward, I began to sketch existing chair designs and trying to combine them to create something innovative. After coming up with this new idea, I 3D printed the design and then made a scaled white model. After researching and gathering information about the measurement of man, I was able to create the chair based on all of these ergonomical needs. These included the seat angle, seat height, seat depth, chair back height, and arm height. The next part of the process was building. I started by cutting, ripping, and laminating all the wood pieces into a semicircular shape over a particle board mold. This technique took a lot of precision and was the most difficult part of building the chair. After bending and assembling all the wood pieces, I wove the seat and added the campaign style back for ergonomical purposes. The next series of images and slides will refer to the final design and how it was built to accommodate different sizes and shapes. Details were important to me while finishing up the flexi rocker. Some examples include enhancements such as simple weaving techniques for durability and clear stoppers added for safety to make sure the user cannot over rock. In the following images, on the left is a five foot three woman who is testing the chair before adding the chair back. On the right is a six foot tall man who is able to sit comfortably while leaning back in the chair. As you can see, the flexi rocker can accommodate multiple user types. 
The goal of this design was to make a unique and functional piece that provides support for those who have ADHD. Through the use of bungee cord for bouncing, grainy wood adding visual texture, and the rocking motion, this chair presents ample opportunity for someone who may require extrasensory stimulation. I hope to create another chair in the future using the things I have learned from this experience to enhance the design moving forward. Some design enhancements that I would like to investigate moving forward include lowering the chair arm height, the seat back height, and adding additional bottom support planks. Designing this chair has taught me a lot about working with wood and has made me appreciate the craftsmanship that it takes to create even the simplest of pieces. Thank you all for listening to my presentation today. I hope you enjoyed it.